starting off, bent over rows, an amazing compound exercise for the back. Uh, in this stage, we're stepping things up. We're increasing the volume. So more sets, we're increasing it to four sets each exercise and also increasing the repetitions as well. So we're doing 10 reps uh, per set. So the volume's going up and that is introducing progressive overload. The body's not quite used to that kind of volume. So getting that kind of volume on the muscles, all of a sudden you're gonna see some of the benefits, some of the changes, some of the body adapting to that new volume. And we're also implementing in some isolation work. Um, we're gonna be hitting some arms today. So we're always trying to push the body in new ways, making sure it adapts and gets buffer and buffer, baby. It's only stage two, but damn, I'm already feeling good. Went from a major compound exercise, bent over rows for back, to bench press, of course, for the chest. There's nothing better than that back and chest. Combination pump. It's like a multiplier pump that's gonna get your upper body feeling like it's just about ready to explode. I had a big breakfast this morning, had a little bit of muesli, and uh, I'm putting all those calories into action right now. If you haven't paired up chest and back before, give it a shot. It's pretty unbelievable. Our horse trough is out of commission because my kids turned it into the set of Swamp Fang. Thankfully we got this handy back up. <laughs> the old camping shower. Oh, and it is gonna be hitting the triple digits this week. So we got the sunblock. I gotta cool down, man. That feels a hell of a lot better. Plus it gives you that nice sheen. Oh, it's all those, it's all those buff dude tricks, baby. Oh, yeah. Cross bench dips. This is really putting a lot of emphasis on the triceps, but technically it's a little bit more of a compound movement because you're not only using elbow flexion and extension, now you're using a little bit of the extension and flexion in the shoulder joint too, because as you bring yourself down, the shoulder extends, and as you press up, it slightly flexes forward there. So a little bit of the chest involved, a little bit of the shoulders, also a major part uh, is gonna be the triceps. Specifically, you really wanna engage them at the top position to really squeeze your triceps Full extension, boom, really get that good squeeze. One of my favorite tricep exercises is really, you really feel that activation, that burn, and uh, overall, it's just amazing. You know, there was something missing, and I couldn't put my bicep on what it was, but I just figured it out, because no buff dude's gym, whether that be in the garage, outdoors, whatever, without the posing mirror, man. And now we got it. Yeah, yeah! This is truly like the old school, that car work has now. If there was a buff dudes video game, the mirror would give you like plus 20 to uh, arrogance. <laughs> <laughs> God, the biggest mistake people make, especially when doing isolation movements, biceps, triceps, is going too heavy. As you can tell, we're only doing 25 pounds. It's really not heavy in the grand scheme of things, but it's an isolation movement. It doesn't have to be heavy. We're doing lower amount of sets, three sets, but increasing the repetitions 15. Now, there's a, a couple reasons why. One, we don't really need as much volume as far as sets goes in isolation movement, but we are increasing the amount of repetitions though. That's really trying to get you in tune with the muscle, that mind-muscle connection and isolation movement. That's what it's all about, trying to isolate a certain muscle group, in this case, biceps. So the more repetitions, you're really gonna feel that burn in the muscles, get you really connected to the muscle. But in order to do that, go lighter with it. Most important thing, not about the weight in this, in this particular exercise. So these are Zotman curls, which is gonna be doing pronated, supinated. Supination hitting both heads of the biceps, but then you pronate down, really gonna hit that nice forearm muscle too, the brachioradialis there. Gives you that nice look in the forearm. So multiple movements in one exercise. We love it. There we go, last exercise of today. It's planks, really working on core strength. 60 second holds for three sets, and we are done with the first day upper body. We'll see you next time for lower body. Yeah. We're busting out the buff dude size swamp cooler for this one. This is like a jet engine that's gonna be blowing on us. So a lot of cold water hitting us. Of course, we got the sunscreen. We're ready to go, man. Some people might ask, why, why do you take your shoes off? Why do you do barefooted? Why do you? use something that has more of a flat foot. Uh, it's just about stability. Sometimes shoes can be pretty cushioned and that's gonna be good for running. Uh, but for squatting, you really wanna get really good contact with the floor. It's gonna make you feel a lot more stable and it's just gonna make your lift overall a bit better. Um, not to say you can't squat with shoes on, but I think if you really wanna try to get the best form and function, 
uh, try to do barefoot or try to use some shoes that don't have a lot of cushion on it. A lot of stretch in this exercise is kind of the main goal here. Reaching an extreme stretch and then contracting the muscles to shorten them, bring yourself up to the top position. So definitely a lot of hip hinge in this. All about the hips, pushing them back uh, as you stretch the weight down and then extending them as you bring the weight up. A little bend in the knee. Um, some people can have less bend if they're more flexible, but the goal is to feel that stretch in the hamstrings. Very much helping to isolate the hamstrings, but because of the hip extension, the glutes are involved too. So an excellent posterior exercise. Got the split squats here. It's a unilateral exercise, really focusing on one leg before moving on to the next one. And you'll feel this one definitely working the quads, the glutes, a little bit in the hamstrings. Now the distance in your stance is really gonna dictate how much you feel in which area. A shorter or a more narrow stance um, is gonna be a little bit more quad glute dominant, but if you take a really far step forward, you're gonna create a little bit more stretch in the hamstring. You're gonna feel it a bit more in the hamstring. So it kind of depends on the comfortability for you. Uh, but an amazing exercise because we love unilateral exercises. There's always gonna be a dominant side in your body. So something like a unilateral movement like this, you can always do a few extra reps on the weaker side of your body. And that way you can bring up any asymmetrical problems uh, and that just can be extremely beneficial when you're trying to balance out your body. This is an excellent exercise which really simulates uh, a hamstring curl machine at a gym, which of course those are pretty big, pretty bulky. Not a lot of people can afford or maybe fit that in their garage or home. So we can just use a dumbbell. You're gonna lay prone on the ground and it's gonna take a little bit of finesse to get it into the proper position. So of course you wanna start light if you've never done this before. And a great thing is, is we've covered almost all of these exercises as their own individual tutorials on this very channel. So if you wanna check some of those out, feel free. I'm including the links to some of the exercises from this plan in the description because we try to break them down the best we can in each of these stages. But if you want a real in-depth look at each one, feel free to check out those tutorials. <laughs> this workout is kicking our ass for sure, but we're not done yet. We are moving on to our next exercise. That is gonna be the seated calf raises. Of course, can't forget the calves, a little bit like the hamstrings. You don't really see them a lot. So, um, but that doesn't mean you can't forget them because you don't wanna have those tiny little calves. I know it's something we struggle with, being a little taller. You always wanna make sure that it's a part of your routine so they're not neglected. And where there's a will, there's a way because again, we don't have a calf raise machine, but it doesn't matter because we got dumbbells. And with your dumbbells, all you gotta do is go ahead and sit on a bench or a chair. As you can see, I'm using our 10 pound weights. Give myself a little bit better range of motion with each repetition. I'm setting the dumbbells right above my knees, as you can see here. Bring it to the top, squeeze, bring it down nice and slowly. And man, I'm telling you, after those hamstring curls, my calves are already feeling very activated. But I'm not finished with these guys just yet. I'm giving a little bit more work before we're wrapped up with this Ooh, lower body day. We're wrapping up lower body day, day two with Superman's focusing on the core, which we do at the end of all of our days in this plan. This time we're gonna be focusing a little bit more on the lower back. We barely survived this workout. Very happy we did it though, but now it's your turn. <laughs> Good luck, we'll see you for day three. Back to upper body, baby, yeah. Yeah, it feels good. Yeah, nice tall pull-up bar, that always helps. So if you're a little bit taller, get that full range of motion. It's always important to get a good stretch all the way down. Contract those lats, pulling the arms downward. So you really, the lats connecting the shoulder joint, what you're doing is extending the arms. So shoulder extension here. So it's pulling it down, the lats are really engaging like that. You really want to depress your shoulders as well, get a good squeeze at the top. Let's really engage along with a little bit of the rear delts, biceps. Whew, this is a tough one, feels good. We like to start with a warm up feel out set, especially with an exercise such as incline bench press. You're focusing on some muscle groups such as the clavicular portion of your chest, a little bit in the anterior delts. Those are smaller muscle groups, so you don't wanna go right into your working sets. 
it, it's, it's a little bit of a shock. Um, so we like to start a little bit lighter, prepare ourselves for the upcoming working sets and get a really good gauge of where we are at. Of course, we really love this exercise due to the fact that it works on the clavicular chest. For me, myself personally, maybe not one of my genetic strong points, so I always like to keep it a priority. Uh, it's all about just keeping that aesthetic buff dude's physique, baby. Yeah. Oh yeah. Got the sun, got the shades, got the cutoff jean shorts. It's the buff dude summer, baby. I feel like I'm at Muscle Beach. There's no beach, there's a hell of a lot of muscle. <laughs> it is definitely a big compound movement for the shoulders, but we just did two other big compound movements, the pull-ups and the incline bench press, which both heavily rely on the shoulders as well. So what's funny about doing two movements um, that your shoulders are working through and then doing a movement specifically targeting the shoulders, you can feel pretty fatigued at that point. So you have to be careful how much weight you put on. And for instance, we put on our warm up weight, but we tried it out the first set. We're like, this is definitely our working weight for sure. Our, uh, our shoulders are pretty fatigued and you just gotta remember you're not a machine, feel it out a little bit. You can track your weight, but it doesn't mean you're always gonna perform that exact weight every day or every stage. So that's why it's important to a little bit lighter not only to feel it out because uh, that's very important as well but it could be because you're already fatigued through other exercises as well especially big compound movements because they're working multiple joints those are working big time as you can tell we're not just coming to the forehead we're stretching a little bit past our forehead bring our head beyond the bar it's gonna create a little bit more stretch in the tricep uh, and that just makes it work a little bit harder doing those 15 reps, really feel those triceps engaged, especially after the five reps or 10 reps, that all well, those last five or so reps really start burning and that's what you want. And most of these exercises, you wanna try to hit that fatigue at the very end of your repetitions. And that is what's telling you that you're pushing your body, your muscles far enough, where they're gonna be forced to adapt, they're gonna grow stronger, gonna grow better. And for some people, if they wanna get bigger, well, it's gonna do that too. Yeah. Arguably the king of all bicep exercises, we got the straight barbell bicep curl. Not doing a lot of weight on these things because again, bicep smaller muscle group, we're really isolating it. So you wanna take it a little lighter, especially with the taxing workout such as this one. And it's 15 reps. So by the end of those reps, you're feeling pretty fatigued. But man, is there anything more beautiful than a bicep pump, especially near the end of the workout, man. It's like the climactic finish. The biceps speak for themselves. Oh. That's all you have to do. You oh. don't even need to talk, you just need to flex. <laughs> it's talking. <laughs> Fuck, this is gonna get us demonetized. Uh. <sighs> <sighs> Sexual transsaurus, <laughs> yeah. This might look like we're doing some buff dude yoga, but this is actually an amazing core strengthening exercise. The bird dogs, as you can see on all fours, and you're lifting your right arm or left arm, depending on which side you want to start with first, and with your opposite leg. So what this is doing is creating a lot of instability. Your core is going to really have to contract, engage, and stabilize this movement, as well as working your glutes, because you're kicking your leg up, extending that leg upwards and uh, so you can really feel that glute contract too. Glutes, abs, lower back, all part of the core. And this exercise definitely does the trick. But this is the last exercise of our last upper body day. We got one more day left, which is lower body. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you again next time. Yeah. Last day of the stage, we're back to lower body and we're starting this day off with the sumo deadlifts and some people might not be too familiar with this exercise in comparison to the conventional deadlift. Um, this is just a variation of the conventional deadlift, but there's quite a few big differences that you want to keep in mind when performing the sumo deadlift. One, it's going to be a, have a hell of a lot wider stance. How wide, that kind of depends on your own morphology, um, but typically you want... Um, uh, a very wide base of support, just like so, with the toes and feet pointed outwards, just like that. So you're not gonna have them in, you're gonna have your toes pointed out. So the inner shin is gonna be placed against the bar, just like that. So once you kind of get into position and you pull yourself, as you can see, kind of that shin is touching the bar, that inside of the shin, just like so. And your hips are gonna be a hell of a lot lower than a conventional deadlift. So instead of a conventional deadlift where the hips are high, you're actually gonna be pulling your hips downward, just like so. And what that's gonna do is gonna bring your shoulders just about in line with the bar. You don't want them ahead of the bar, 
you want them just about lined slightly behind, just like that. So as you can see, it's almost like more of a squat stance. So a lot lower in the hips, because you're gonna get have a lot more leg drive in this. So you're gonna pull your hips into position, just like that. As you can see the arms, just in the inside of the thighs there. And once you're in this position, pull down, you're going to push uh, and then extend the top position. One thing I love about the sumo deadlifts is it's a little bit more leg activation. It takes a bit more stress off of the back because you're not as much in a bowed forward position as you would be in a conventional deadlift. So the back is a little bit more neutral, a little bit more upright. For me, it's a bit more comfortable than a conventional deadlift. When you're a little bit taller, it can be harder to, you know, be in this position. And as you're pulling that weight up, the lower back is definitely activated a bit more with the sumo since you're a bit more upright, a lot more leg drive, a little bit more comfortable for some people. So awesome exercise and definitely one that the legs are working big time. Oh, yeah. So we're moving on to the Bulgarian split squats and you're going to notice that both me and Brandon are doing it body weight. And that's really because we're feeling pretty taxed and that's something you wanna do when working out is listen to your body. And in addition to our home gym workouts, we're doing quite a bit of running, quite a bit of cardiovascular and it's taking its toll to the point where we're just taking it a little bit easier today. We're still gonna push through the workout, but that's what's good is sometimes you don't have to feel like you need to hit a new PR every single time you wanna work out. It's really the consistency that matters and that's what we're doing today. That didn't feel quite as bad as I thought they were getting actually, uh, but these are always tough. I mean, difficult exercise, depending on how heavy you are. We're a little bit heavier, you know, we're hitting over 220, so a lot more weight to control. Got the eccentric, the lengthening of it. Really feel that, those muscles kind of like trying to hold it. You can almost feel them just like tearing apart in a way. Sounds kind of horrible, but it's really kind of what's happening. But really those little micro tears are gonna be helping your body to then repair them, make them stronger, make them bigger, and make them buffer. Yeah. It's like, as if Nordic ham curls wasn't bad enough, quads just needed something to be destroyed as well. And uh, these kneeling sissy squats will definitely be the ones to do it. Don't let the name fool you. The only person that's gonna be a sissy after this is over is uh, possibly you. <laughs> They're pretty tough. We are wrapping up our upper lower body stage with some glute holds, which Brandon is doing right now. Three sets, 60 seconds. How are you feeling, Brandon? I've actually finished three minutes ago. I'm just cramped up and I can't move. <laughs> that explains. <Please> help. <laughs> yeah, that explains today's workout pretty good. So uh, we're gonna try to get a two by four or something to hit Brandon in the uh, crotch <laughs> with to kind of straighten him out. <laughs> we'll see you guys. Please don't do that. <laughs> see you guys for stage three. Until then, yeah. stay buff. Yeah. Help. <laughs>